What's going on, you awesome, beautiful people? My name is Devon. You're watching Turbo Shot Incredible. Today, we're doing something new, something that I've always wanted to do since for the longest time. Um, I finally went ahead and got some equipment to get started on it, and today I'm going to show you that process. I'm going to be learning how to work with and mold carbon fiber. Um, I apologize if there's any background noise. I am in my garage, and you know, there's stuff going on outside. So hopefully, you can only hear me. But if there is any excess noise, just kind of, you know, cut it out. So today we're going to be doing a very basic, very simple um, wet hand layup of carbon fiber. Now, for those of you who don't know what that is, that's basically going to be the basic procedure of manually wetting the carbon fiber completely out. Um, all by hand. There's not going to be any vacuum bagging, not going to be any heat or any pressure. It's all going to be at room temperature, um, which this particular kit or this particular resin, I should say, this epoxy resin, um, is best cured at about 70 degrees. Today it's a little cool outside, um, but we're going to go ahead and get started because I'm really excited and I don't want to wait any longer. This is our carbon fiber weave. I've got some twill weave right here. Um, I believe this is 3K. I'll have to double check to make sure. Um, but that's not really a big deal right now because we're not doing anything structural yet. The laminating epoxy. And we've got, oh crap, I made a mess. Whoops. And I've also got the uh, epoxy hardener right here. PVA slash mold release agent. This is so your parts don't get stuck to the mold, otherwise you're gonna have a bad day. A mixing cup, it's got two sticks in there. Uh, a set of gloves. This is my homemade cleaner that I'm gonna be using to clean the panels that we, we will be molding off of today. I also have a scale so I can measure out how much of the chemicals, the epoxy we're gonna be using. A two to one hardener, so that's two parts laminating resin to one part hardener. Played out. Um, I just got some black plastic bag over a folding table, so any excess epoxy doesn't ruin the table when it just goes on the back. So this is all the stuff that we're going to do today. Also, uh, my proper cloth. This will be for cleaning up these parts. You can see they're pretty gross. It's already pretty gross. And the clean one here is going to be for putting down the PVA once the parts are clean. You always want to use a really clean, lint-free cloth. So that's what we got right here. This is what we're going to be starting with. This is the headlight cover off a 93 MR2, Toyota MR2. And these are the engine bay uh, side, I guess side body panels. Figured these are two parts that are non-structural. It doesn't have to be strong. And it'll be a good first part to try. So if it comes out like butt and if it comes out like crap, no big deal. These aren't, you know, crazy parts or anything like that. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and start cleaning it and then we'll get from there. I'm gonna try to make these gloves last because I forgot to buy some while I was at the store. Um, this is the gloves that came in the kit. So hopefully I can make these last. I would like to do, you know, more than one layer. Uh, but we'll see what our material allows for. So you're gonna be very careful with this material. I'm gonna keep it whole. And I already got some frays in, the, in it itself, so. First time we're learning. All right, so right off the bat, this is not going to be long enough to do one continuous piece. Not a big deal. Um, let's see about the door sill. Well, the engine. engine covers. So you wanna be careful, because as you can see, I'm starting to get some little frays in the material, and that will show up on the final product and not gonna be good. But since this is my first go around, I'm not too, clear about it yet um, but we'll see how well we can fix it if you're curious of what my cleaning solution is it is a very basic solution alcohol and vinegar one to one it cleans anything very well doesn't leave behind any residue and dries up pretty quickly too Well, 
I just realized that entire last clip you saw, the mic was turned off, so you never heard what I said. Go figure. These are the problems with having a powered microphone. Um, anyway, I was just giving you a little pep talk about why I am doing carbon fiber now. It's been something that I've always wanted to do. It's always been a dream of mine to know how to work with carbon fiber and to be able to make car parts and other things out of carbon fiber. So I finally said, you know what? What am I waiting for? Let's get started right now. So I went out, I ordered this carbon fiber starter kit and here we are. So that is my advice to you guys. If there's something that you've been wanting to do, you've been wanting to get into or try out, just do it. Like the only person holding yourself back, in most cases, is yourself. You just gotta do it, you know? Just take that first step, buy that kit, take that class, ask that girl out or that guy. You know, whatever it is, just take that first step and then you start to realize we're not that bad. But more importantly, you really start to realize that we are the happiest when we are in the pursuit of one of our goals. It's not after we accomplish the goal, it's during the process of accomplishing the goal. That's when we're the happiest because then we've got something to talk about. We've got something to be excited about. We've got something to think about, something to look forward to, something to dream about. You see, whereas after the fact, it's like, man, that was awesome. Now what? So, enjoy the journey. That's where you're gonna have the most fun. And uh, just go out there and do something awesome, you know? Just do whatever it is that you really wanna do, you know? As long as it's not hurting anyone or putting any negative energy out there, just, just go for it, you know? I'm gonna go a little bit more liberal on the PBA. Um, I think I might pour it on the part directly. I know, you know, most people recommend pouring it on the cloth and then wiping it. I just did that and it didn't apply nearly enough. So I'm going to pour it on the part directly and we're going to go from there. The PVA Looks like it should be pretty dry. Yeah, feels pretty good. We're only gonna do a little bit right here because this is gonna be the first coat. I don't know how much it's gonna really take. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix up a little bit of the resin of the epoxy. It's gonna be both resin and hardener. It's two to one, so two resin to one hardener. You just gotta eyeball. So I, I see how big the part is. I have no idea how this stuff spreads. <laughs> so this is gonna be fun. Get this resin here, two to one. We got ounces on the cup, oh, there we go. It's already in, all right. This is just gonna be the first coat to get everything tacky. So I don't really know, like I said, how much I'm gonna need, okay? We're at about six grams right now. I'm not trying to like pour out a whole bunch of this. That already used most of it. As you can see, how much that went down from six grams. So I think I'm gonna stop with that and see if we can get three grams of the hardener in there. 30 minute pot life. I'm gonna do my best to mix everything up. I did look up a trick of uh, heating it up to help cut down on these air bubbles you see here. I might do that because that is a lot of air bubble. Oh, it's kind of bubbly. It's not as bad as it was, but this is the first base sticky coat, so I'm not too worried about it. Making sure to get all the bristles out. Because every now and then with these cheap brushes, you have a bristle that falls out. And you don't want that in your finished product. Oh, that's a nice that's a nice shot for you. It's pretty tacky. It's not perfectly tacky. Um, the perfect would be where you touch it and it doesn't come off on your finger or your glove. Now, since this is a reverse mold, I'm doing it positive instead of negative, um, it doesn't need to be that tacky. This is more so just to hold it in place than it is to actually be the first initial coat that you're gonna see. This is gonna be on the bottom of the actual part itself. So it should be okay to go ahead and move on because I'm really excited to move on. Okay, so a quick tip, as you're waiting for your epoxy to cure, 
A good thing to do is clean off your brush and whatever container that you're using to mix them in. That way you can reuse them. Um, a good way to clean it is with acetone or nail polish remover if you don't have acetone. Um, now me personally, I don't have either one, go figure. But what I do have has seemed to work pretty well so far. As you can tell, that's pretty, that's pretty clean. And um, I'm pretty happy with how that came out. Um, the brush, on the other hand, I didn't clean off the brush, but I did wrap it in plastic, and I also put it in the freezer, or well, the fridge, but uh, it's not that much time. Um, it's recommended to put it in the freezer, that way, you know, it slows down the cure time on the epoxy, and it'll last you a lot longer, you can use your brush again, and that's a good thing to have. I don't know how much material I'm gonna have. I like to do, at, you know, two layers. Um, if it's enough for one, you know, have some excess, then I might try to do something smaller. Let's start it. I'm kind of anxious, so let me slow it down here. All right. I kind of wish I could tape this off to help with the frame, but since I didn't really like cut out shapes of this part, I can't really do that. But hindsight is to template this out and then cut out the shapes in paper and transfer that over into the fiber and cut that out. That way, when you lay it down, you have the shape already. So. That's what I'm gonna do next time. Now, this is a delicate process. We wanna keep the fibers as close together as possible. I already showing y'all I had some, some issues with it fraying from when I messed with it earlier. And we're just gonna lay it down. Try to keep it as close together as possible. That's already not gonna work. Okay. down. Just trying to keep it together. No, oh, I mean, actually some of the air bubbles went down, so that's cool. Oh, now you don't want to do a paint motion. It's more of a like spackling. You want to go from the center out. There's a little void right here that I see already, so I kind of pushed that down. So I'm going to get down low so I can see and we're going to begin. Okay, I mixed up a fresh batch. Let's get back to it. Everything, so once we get the top down, uh, done, I feel like the rest is gonna come together, the sides and the small bracket areas. Oh shit, oops. Kinda, I kinda pushed it, getting ahead of myself there, so. Definitely wanna take your time, go slowly, be careful. Right now it's 
not coming together like I thought it would, or like I was hoping it would. I guess I just may let it sit for a few hours and mess with it again later. This is me learning to do carbon fiber, and you're watching. Step uh, by step by fail by step by fail. Yeah, um, it's definitely only going to be one ply, which it's going to be really flimsy. I already know that. But, uh, you know, I still wanted to learn, wanted to try it. Um, the next part's definitely going to be a better part than this. I, yeah, I'm just not really happy with the way this is coming together at all. Let's see if I can trim this up a bit more. Looks kind of cool right there. But not in person. <laughs> Cut's really clean. It's not fraying. I've learned a lot in this first go around, so. Although it's most likely not gonna come out very nice, I learned a ton, and that's really what, what matters. Okay, it's now the next day. The part has been sitting here for about seven hours, eight hours. Um, it's pretty hard to the touch. So this has been sitting, you said curing at room temperature for about the last eight hours. You can see the spots and the dimples and how earlier uh, I didn't get a nice smooth finish of the epoxy. So my goal is to sand this part smooth and then I'll reapply another thin layer of epoxy and hopefully I can level it out. Got some bubbles, uh, some bumps in it that I want to get out. But overall, it looks pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna start off with 150 just to help uh, take off some of the high points and then uh, we will move on to 240 from there. Okay, got my water. Just a little bit of water just to uh, damp it to help get off the dust so we can clean the surface for the next layer of epoxy. And I'm just gonna dab it in. You see how it's cleaning it. And dabbing it on. This time I'm gonna pour the epoxy on and see if I can move it around to get a better finish. And I feel like I might need more, honestly. Over here it looks really good. I'm really happy with how this part turned out. Would you look at that? That looks really good. I'm actually really, really happy now with how this is coming out. Last night I got a little distraught because it didn't look like it was coming together well. Um, now it's looking pretty proper. I think I'm just gonna call this good because I don't wanna try to be too perfect on my first go around and just make it look worse. So far, there's no, uh, whoa, as I get really sloppy, bristles turning out, so that's really cool. Alright, I am back from work. The part has been sitting here, curing, since about one o'clock in the afternoon, about 12.30 to be exact, so it's now 11. So it's been curing for like 12 hours. And it looks amazing. This is no buffing, no waxing, no polishing of any sort. This is just straight from the second coat of epoxy and just straight cure. And that looks, man, that looks really good. Like, that looks legit, bro. I'm pretty happy with how just the finish came out. For Like I said, not buffing it or anything yet. This is just sitting here drying, curing. The real test remains to be seen about uh, peeling it off the mold. But anyway, it looks really good how it is right now. I'll probably still buff it. Um, 
I'm gonna hit it with the 800 grit, to give it a nice wet sand and get that orange peel out. But I'm really happy with how that looks so far. Only once it's got about another eight hours to cure, um, just to be safe before I start trying to uh, release it from the mold. Okay, so it's now the morning and it's done. Like that looks like a legitimate carbon fiber part. I am <laughs> I'm super stoked, dude. Derek. That's sick. That's awesome. That looks amazing. And that's just like straight up uh, two coats of epoxy after the initial wet layup. And uh, that's it. No buffing yet. No wet sanding it even. So I'm still gonna wet sand it uh, and then buff it out. But I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can pop it off its mold and we'll see what it's like. Uh, just trying to find a good places to peel. That's why I left so much material on. Ah, shit, that got me good. <laughs> okay. No blood yet. So that's good. Oh, wait, spoke too soon. Hey, look, got some blood there. So definitely be careful because this stuff is sharp, as you can see. base. Nice. You see how easy that came off? That was amazing. So here's the mold. I'm going to show you that first to build some, some suspense. Ooh, got some cracking on that. I wonder if we can sand that down. So here's the old part. Um, it lost some of the paint. But other than that, oh look, there's some of the PVA. This is my first carbon fiber part ever. And I'd say it came out good. This is where it just got damaged just now, taking it off. Um, oh, never mind, that's just moisture. Haha! -ha. Sweet. Nice. Alright, well, there it is. So, I'm gonna go ahead and. Uh, probably wet sand this down so we can get some of this orange peel off and here's the inside the inside's got kind of that dry carbon look because that's what I did with the, uh, the mold I put down the PVA and then that layer of, of epoxy and it's got some of that on the sides but this is the inside but even that looks nice you know this side is the side I'd have to buff if I did the negative mold. So that's the plus, the positive to doing a positive mold. <laughs> there you go. So the positive to, being a, to doing a positive mold is the finish is a lot cleaner right off if you do it, you know, I guess if you take, take your time. And then the negative to doing a negative mold is you get that matte finish, unless you want that, but then you, all you gotta do is buff this out and it'll be nice and shiny just like this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if we can uh, trim this up to match more of the original shape. Okay, so it's done being cut. For my first mold, having absolutely no idea, I mean absolutely no idea what I'm doing, I don't think it's that bad. This is uh, how close it is. I mean, there are some parts I realized where I definitely could have gotten it closer, especially if I used um, tools to help press the material into the crevices that I kind of missed, and of course kept it straighter as I cut. But like I said, this is just a demonstration piece, just for me to learn the process. I'm not looking to get 100% perfection my first time around. I feel like you have a higher chance of messing something up going for perfection your first time than just trying to learn the process. So this is more of an exercise for me to learn. And boy, did I learn a lot. Okay, so I am headed to meet up with Ben right now on his lunch break to get the polishing compound and some other things to see if we can finish this up today. I got to be at work at two o'clock, it's 11.30, so we're pushing it, but I can at least get the stuff from him and he can check out this new setup I have because he hasn't seen it yet. So let's go meet up with Ben. Hi everybody. I just met up with Devon and he wanted to show me what he's been working on. And uh, yeah, this this came out looking pretty good, I think. Um, how long did it take you? 
This, this, wow. look, this <laughs> it's a slow process for sure. I would definitely like to see thicker ply and yeah, sure. yeah. But this this is pretty cool I'm from yeah. there. Yeah. Okay. Well, I thought the, the first layer, oh. you continue to layer it on, it's sharp as balls. Yeah, no, that, that, that it, it, hurt. It cut the crap out of me a whole bunch of times already. Well, yeah, with that polishing stuff, you should be able to get this to look really pretty again. Yeah. I'm really impressed with how well it took the shape. Yeah. Yeah. For being one ply, like that's amazing. And no vacuum bagging. And I mean, it's definitely got some flex to it, but it's. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we can see uh, just how much stronger we can make it. Oh, I got a job, guys. Yeah, yeah in case you're wondering what Ben's new job is. It's a, it's a local Houston speed shop. Been in business 10 years. It's pretty cool doing all sorts of hot rod stuff. All right, so that's about gonna wrap it up for this video. I'm here chilling in my room, about to get ready to go for work, but I wanted to end it here on a formal note. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I had a lot of fun making this part. I learned a ton of new things about how to work with carbon fiber, how to mold carbon fiber, and how to make a mold itself for the actual part you're gonna be making. So I'm really stoked. I cannot wait to make the next project. And if you can't wait either, Go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up. It really helps us out. And it lets me know that you are excited for the next video that we make building with carbon fiber. Also, if you found this helpful, go ahead and give it a share, you know? Share it with your friends. Anything helps. And uh, be sure to leave a comment down below because we do love talking to you guys. I love hearing back from you. I love giving you, hearing your feedback. If you are somebody who has worked with carbon fiber and you are familiar with these procedures, please give me some comments. I would love to hear some constructive criticism because I'm trying to learn. I'm trying to get better at this so I can make more awesome parts for the 5.3 build, for whatever it is that I may want to make a part for. Um, so yeah, thanks for checking it out. We really appreciate it. If you would like to catch another awesome build video like this, be sure to click right here. If you just want to subscribe to the channel so you can watch more and keep up to date with what's going on with the 5.3 build, the 6.0 Trans Am, and also our new carbon fiber creations list, go ahead and uh, click the subscribe button right here. And remember to go out there and do something awesome. Peace. Oh, and I wanted to add, yeah, at the end of the video, I decided to wet sand it for some reason. I, I, I'm really not sure why. I think, I guess I thought it would make it better to help uh, smooth it out. Um, kind of like paint, you know, after you lay down paint, you can wet sand it and it comes out nice and smooth. I, I, I guess I thought it might have the same effect. Um, so far, it has not. So, yeah, I wet sanded it and then I uh, have been trying to polish and buff and it's just not doing anything. So, I'm going to go ahead and cut my loss and learn from that mistake and not ever wet sand carbon fiber again. So, um, if you already knew that, leave it in the comments below.